Hello, welcome to the board exams. These are TMJ continuing lectures. So uh, before this lecture, there's uh, four other lectures. So make sure you review them. All right. And uh, this is the final lecture of the TMJ and related structures. Okay. All right. So we're going to review the TMJ anatomy. Also, we're going to talk about the centric relation. What is centric? relation which we also talked about in the previous lecture and we're going to talk about the related structures stru structures such as ligaments the infrahyoid suprahyoid muscles okay all right so the what are some of the passive structures of the articulation okay so the passive structures of articulation uh, involve the osseous anatomy of the TMJ and then you have the limiting influence of the ligament okay and you have the shape and orientation of the occlusal plane remember we mentioned earlier that if the if the slope of the articular eminence is steep the 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 incise of angle okay or the 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 cusps of teeth are, are going to be tall all right so there is a relationship between the teeth and the anatomy of the uh, of the uh, tmj all right so you have to keep that in mind So these are the passive structures, passive structures, ligaments, the, the, the bony anatomy and the shape of uh, and the orientation of occlusion. Now, what are some of the active uh, elements of articulation? Okay. So let's look at the active. So the active elements of articulation include the muscles. Okay. And they also yeah, include the reflex responses that arise in and around the teeth, the TMJ, the muscles, and the periodontia. These are the active elements of articulation. Now, TMJ anatomy. All right. So the, the muscles. So what are the, some of the muscles we have? We have positional muscles. Okay and we have the elevator muscles and number three we have depressor muscles okay all right so some of these muscles we have the temporalis muscle right here we have the masseter this one here uh, you have the lateral pterygoid the medial pterygoid is on the medial side of course of the mandible. And you have the uh, the suprahyoid muscles. All right, this is the digastric muscle. So these are the, the anatomy and the muscles related to the TMJ. Okay. So the main muscle is the lateral pterygoid muscle. All right. And the lateral pterygoid has two heads or bellies. Is a superior head which is this one here, I'll put S as for superior, and inferior head, which is this one here, okay? So the superior head, the reason that they are called pterygoid muscles, okay, is because they attach to the pterygoid plate. Now, the superior head of lateral pterygoid muscle originates in the infratemporal surface of the sphenoid greater wing okay infratemporal surface of greater wing or sphenoid that's the where the lateral pterygoid muscle originates and it inserts onto the medial one-third of the disc and hand of condyle Make sure you know the origin and insertion of these muscles. Okay. 
and the inferior head of lateral pterygoid okay originates from the lateral surface okay originates from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and attaches to or inserts onto the neck of the condyle right this is the inferior head so originates here and attaches onto the neck all right you can see this that's the neck there with the condyle and what is the function of the lateral pterygoid muscle so the function of the lateral pterygoid muscle is protrusion okay and it pulls and holds the disc forward and it also assists in the rotary movement of the mandible. All right, lateral pterygoids assist in the rotary movement, meaning the hinge movement of the mandible. All right, and then you have another muscle, which is the temporalis. So, the temporalis muscle, what does it do? Okay, so you have to know um, the temporalis muscle originates on the temporal fossa and temporal fascia make sure you remember that the temporal fascia also originates in the temporal fossa and the temporal fascia and it inserts onto the coronoid okay you can see in the picture above here you can see that insertion onto the coronoid okay this is here the coronoid is up here The coronoid is up here so the so origin of the temporalis muscle is from the tem temporal fossa and the temporal uh, temporal fascia and it inserts onto the coronoid of the mandible and also the anterior border of the ramus all right the anterior border of the ramus has has um, the temporalis uh, muscle okay so remember that all right so now let's 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 talk about uh the the function the function of temporalis muscle usually helps so you can see the temporalis muscle has three portions okay uh the temporalis muscle has this anterior portion you see this anterior portion which is pointing upward here so this anterior portion helps in closing you see that you know elevating the mandible this posterior portion helps in retrusion of the mandible all right so you have to keep that in mind that the employee's uh, muscle has three parts okay So the masseter, which is this muscle here, you should know the masseter by now, and there uh, you have the temporalis muscle here. Okay, so that's temporalis muscle. This is the masseter. So the masseter you have, the masseter has two options, two, two parts. Okay, so the masseter has the superficial head and also the deep head. The superficial uh, head of the of the masseter originates on the anterior two thirds of the lower border of the zygomatic arch. So, and this is the reason when somebody has a fractured zygomatic arch, their their opening is going to be limited because it hurts when they open. All right, because when they try to open the the masseter pulls onto the zygoma, the, 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 the broken zygoma, uh, and so it hurts, so they, they stop opening, all right? So, because the superficial head of masseter attaches onto the anterior two-thirds, okay? It attaches onto the anterior two-thirds of, uh, of the lower border of the zygomatic arch, and it inserts onto the lateral surface of the angle of the mandible 
all right also remember there's a ligament what ligament attaches to the to the to the angle of the mandible it is the stylo mandibular ligament all right all right so uh, now the deep masseter the deep masseter in this case you can see a portion of it it's, it's right here okay that's a deep masseter right there so the deep masseter origin is the medial surface okay of the zygomatic arch and the insertion is the lateral surface of the ramus and the angle so lateral surface of the ramus and the angle of the mandible all right and of course the the, the, the function of the of the of the masseter is to it acts as it's 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 a uh, it's it's an um, As it's an elevator, so it, it closes, it helps to close, okay, to close the, 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 the job. Uh, so is the medial pterygoid muscle, also helps to close the, 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 the jaw, all right. The medial pterygoid muscle, the origin is the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid. Now, look at this the both pterygoid muscles attached to the lateral pterygoid plate. Of the sphenoid bone now the only difference is that one attaches to the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate that's the the lateral pterygoid muscle attached to the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and the medial pterygoid muscle attaches to the lateral pterygoid plate medial side okay so it attaches to the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate make sure i keep that in mind okay so the insertion of the medial pterygoid is the posterior and lower part of the medial surface of the ramus and the angle all right so in this case uh, let's 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 see here so This is this is going to be so this is the masseter here and this one here is going to be your medial pterygoid okay medial pterygoid muscle all right now the suprahyoid muscles yeah they, they include the geniohyoid muscle the digastric muscle the mylohyoid muscle and stylohyoid muscles okay so the suprahyoid muscle what they do is when the mandible is trying to move all right these two suprahyoid muscles they stabilize the hyoid bone so that so that the mandible has a stable um uh, has a, is, is opening on a stable uh, system okay so they help to stabilize the suprahyoid muscle they help to stabilize the 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 the, the hyoid when the money boy is opening all right infrahyoid muscles they include make sure you know the what these groups of muscles include okay which which one is found on the uh, superior to the higher which one is found uh, inferior to the higher okay so the ones who found in fear to the hyoid are the thyro thyrohyoid, stenohyoid, stenothyroid, and omohyoid. Okay. All right. So this is here is coming from the from the thyroid here to the hyoid bone. So that's thyrohyoid. And then you have the stenohyoid, is this long one here in the middle, from the sternum to the hyoid. And then you have stenothyroid, okay? Stenothyroid is this one here, okay? 
and you are looking for the homohyoid. Homohyoid has two bellies, and so this is here is homohyoid. Okay. All right. The posterior neck muscles include the trapezius muscle, include the SCM, sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid has two heads, okay? Has a clavicular head and the sterno head, which is, is the reason it's, it's called sternocleidomastoid. So it attaches, it, uh, at, it, it has uh, at, um, the attachment okay or the origin the the, the sternum or the, the the clavicle and the insertion onto the mastoid okay and what's the function of the SEM? it helps to rotate the head to the opposite side so if the left SEM contracts the head is going to turn to the right side if the right SEM contracts the head is going to turn to the left side if they both contract then the head is just going to move forward okay if both both, both SEMs contract all right and then you have the big muscle here or the back is the trapezius you have the SEM here and you have uh, intrinsic muscles here of the of the of the of the neck all right now the muscles that contract to open the mouth all right as i told you so the suprahyoid muscles they contract to open the mouth so when the mouth is opening the suprahyoid muscles contract okay and these are geniohyoid mylohyoid digastric muscles and stylohyoid and some of the infrahyoid muscles also contract and they contract to keep the the hyoid stable okay all right make sure you memorize that now what happens during opening let's see what happens during opening when you open the lateral tegoids contract now which one is contracting when you open the 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 the, the superior head which is this one in blue so superior head of the lateral tegoid muscle relaxes And the inferior head of the lateral tegoid muscle contracts. Okay. That's what happens when you're opening. Both, both, uh, bo both parts of the lateral tegoid are not contracted. Only when you open, only the uh, inferior head of the uh, lateral tegoid is contracted. Okay. Yeah. So that means the superior head is going to help in closing. All right. So just keep that in mind. So, so when you open the mouth, this is what happens when you open the mouth. When you oh, we're opening the mouth. For example, if the if the if the this is the left side, this is the right side. Okay. If the left side muscle lateral tegoid contracts the condyle is going to move downward okay forward immediately all right and the mandible is going to move to the right side if the left lateral tegoid contracts okay and if both now the question is what happens when both lateral tegoid muscles contract meaning both sides right and left when both of them contract the mandible moves forward and this forward movement of the mandible is called protrusion when the right lateral tegoid muscle contracts the mandible moves to the left okay Keep that in mind. Make sure you remember you remember the movements when when uh, the muscles contract. Now, when the mouth is closing, as I mentioned, when it's closing, you have uh, the muscles which are in play. You have the 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 masseter muscle. You have the uh, medial pterygoid. You have 
de, the temporaris muscle, okay, and also you have the superior head. So the when, when the muscle the, when the mouth closes, the inferior head of the lateral pterygoid muscle relaxes. And then the superior head contracts. Okay. Make sure you know that. All right. So this is another way of saying what we just mentioned. So here, when when you have uh, the mouth is closed, the inferior head here is relaxed. So minus means relaxed, and plus here means contraction. Okay. All right. So the nerve innervation. So innervation of the TMJ. So the mandibular division of trigeminal, meaning the V3 innervates the TMJ, all right? So it innervates the TMJ via auricular temporal, uh, the masseteric nerve. So make sure you know you know that. So, but it's the it's the V3 that innervates it. And motor innervation, also V3 or the, the V3, okay? Provides motor innervation to muscles of mastication. And the blood supply, the blood supply, okay, it comes from the maxillary artery, the facial artery, and the external carotid artery. All right. So make sure you, when you're reviewing your anatomy in the anatomic sciences, make sure you know uh, the branches of the maxillary artery, the, you know, the facial artery, you don't necessarily need to know the branches, okay? But you have the uh, submental sub sub artery, you have the, okay, the, the, you have the lingual branch of the, uh, of the submental artery also, okay? That's, that's the, that's, those are facial branches. So some of the, the facial branch that you need to know, uh, however, this is different. It's, it's the, the facial branch also cause, forms the angular artery and also forms the, 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 the superior labial artery, artery, okay? So make sure you know the, the branches of these uh, arteries. Um, maxillary artery is very important. It has several branches, okay? Uh, branch, it has... So branches of the maxillary artery, you have uh, the, it has three parts. Remember it has three parts. It has the, the first part, you have the inferior alveolar artery. And uh, uh, among the, the second part, you have the, uh, the middle meningeal artery. And you have, the, in the last part, you have the, the nerve to uh, pterygoid canal. Uh, the petroso, your yeah, sphino uh, palatine artery, yeah, the, the, the posterior superior violin nerve, uh, I mean uh, artery. So, this blood supply here, it's not just for the TMJ, but make sure you, you, you review all the anatomy. I can go on and on to talking about all these uh, arteries, all right? But just make sure you review them. And also branches of carotid. Uh, external carotid artery. So the just a quick review. So you, you start from the first branch is going to be your your superior thyroid, and then the second branch is going to be the uh, the the ascending. Okay, as as you have the no superior thyroid. No, you have you're going to go to to the yes ascending pharyngeal and occipital, and then you have your lingos, and you have your this is coming from memory, so make sure you you you, you go back and review. Uh, these are the branches. So you have a superior thyroid, you have the the ascending pharyngeal, the occipital artery, you have the the lingual artery, and then you have your facial artery. And from your facial artery, you have your your um, your, your 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 maxillary artery, and then you have your your temporal artery. Okay, so make sure you remember the, those branches. All right. All right. So my mas uh, masticator system. 
So the masticatory system uh, is, uh, consists of the muscles that move the mandible and then also includes the, the bones which influence the direction of movement and you have ligaments and fascia, uh, and fascia which limit range of motion. This consists of masticatory system. All right, so some of the ligaments, as we mentioned before, is the sphenomandibular ligament, which the origin is the angular spine of the sphenoid bone, and the insertion is the, uh, the lingula of the mandible. And the stylomandibular ligament, origin is the styloid process, and the insertion is the angle of the mandible. This we have seen in the previous lecture already, so this is just a quick review. And the, 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 the TMJ capsule, okay? So the capsular ligament, we mentioned the capsular ligament, all right? So the capsular ligament attaches on the, on the articular eminence, okay? and the condylar neck so this is the ligament here you can see it's attaching to the lateral surface of the articular eminence and attaching to the neck of the condyle all right and this uh, capsular ligament helps to stabilize the joint all right so anatomy of the TMJ here, you can, you can identify the structures, all right? So let's, say, let's start with the disc. So this is the disc here. Where's the conda? So this is our conda. And where's the, the, superior, the, the superior lateral pterygoid muscle? This is the superior lateral trigger muscle. Inferior lateral trigger muscle, this is the big one here. So that's there. And the synovial tissue. The synovial tissue is going to be this one. Remember we mentioned yeah, in the last lecture that in the bilaminar zone, okay, and the retrodiscal tissue, you have this uh, synovial tissue that produces synovial fluids, okay? All right, and then you have the retrodiscal tissue is this one here. All right, and you have the posterior ligament. Your posterior ligament is this one here. That's your posterior ligament, and then you have dense fibrous connective tissue. Dense fiber connective tissue, that's that, these are the ones, okay? All right. So the, the anatomy of TMJ, make sure you, 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 you review the previous lecture. And also this, this lecture is mostly a quick review of the anatomy, okay? The TMJ. So continuing the anatomy of TMJ, so let's see here uh, the, the condyle, the medial and lateral pores. So this one here. All right, so this is the lateral pole, this is the medial pole. You have the bony fossa, so the fossa is here, and we say that the fossa is very thin, as you can see, all right? And you have the disc, is the yellow part, the medial disco ligament. The medial disco ligament is this one here, and the lateral disco ligament is gonna be this one, the discal ligaments, they attach the disc to the lateral and medial pores, okay? And the, as we saw in the last, in the last lecture, the zygomatic process, so the zygomatic process is here, okay? And the, the, the capsule, so the capsule here is, should be here, all right? And the, the medial spine, medial spine is right there. Okay.
all right so anatomy so dense fibrous connective tissue of the tmj uh, and then you have uh, a vascular tissue which is which is this one and a neural tissue meaning no new no no nerves that's a disc they're talking about the disc okay a vascular and neuro meaning no 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 nerves and it has collagen but not cartilage so this here okay and so i know your fluid is produced from this area here all right okay so look at the look at the shape the shape of the scar so you can see that the medial pole where the medial pole lies is a, is a, it's a, it's a pointed area okay so it's like this one this is the medial pole all right where the medial pole enters all right and here you can see the the glenoid fossa is concave and you can see the Articular eminence is convex, and the conda, as we saw in the last lecture, is also uh, is is uh, convex. Okay. All right. This is what we just described. You can see the medial portion here is pointed compared to the lateral here, and this pointed area is going to triangulate. When you say the conda triangulates. Are, are along the medial wall this is what they mean because this looks like a triangle right so when it moves it looks like it's making a triangle so it says triangling all right all right so you can see now this picture is very important okay the 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 condyla head the, the head of the condyles okay they are not you can see they are not in line with this line it's not 100 they are not they are not lined up with that line okay they are kind of angled so the the angled when you draw when you bisect the mandible right in the middle okay so what happens and you extend this line here you see this line going here and this line here these angles are about 45 degrees this angle here okay so you have to know that the the condors when you extend when you extend uh the 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 axis the long axis of the condor they are going to meet almost at the at the what do you call at the foramen magna okay and that's 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 they, they meet almost at the 45 degree angle all right so if it's each angle is 45 degree and then the entire the entire uh angle in between is going to be 90 degree angle so the condors, the long axis of the condors are going to meet at 90 degrees. Okay. They meet at 90 degrees. They meet the sagittal, the mid sagittal at 45 degrees, but they meet each other at 90 degrees. Okay. All right. So this is the the conda, the head of conda. You can see it's 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 convex here, the conda, and then the the fossa here is is uh, concave. Now everything looks like the 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 fossa and the condyle head uh, fit nicely on the on the on this scar model here. However, remember the 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 conda and the fossa without the disc they are incongruent they are not equal they don't fit well properly you need a disc for that to sit well okay so the normal the normal forza the normal forza and the normal condor are incongruent they don't fit 
each, each other well, okay? Centric relation. What is centric relation? Okay. We mentioned the previous lecture, so we're not going to dwell too much on this definition here because we've already mentioned it. However, centric relation is a maxillomandibular relationship in which the condyles articulate with the thinnest of vascular portion of the respective discs. All right. With a with a complex of the anterior superior portion against the slope of the articular eminence. Again, it's anterior superior against the posterior surface of the articular eminence. And this portion, and, and the, I mean, this position is independent of the tooth contact. CR is independent of tooth contact. All right. And this position is clinically discernible when the mandible is directed superiorly and anteriorly. Superiorly and anteriorly. Okay? It is restricted to pure rotary movement. Alright? So when you, are when you are in CR, the only movement you can do is rotary movement, meaning the hinge movement. Okay, so when you are here, you do hinge movements. All right. So, with the medial paws of the condor, uh, the breast against the medial articular lip of the fossa, which means the medial sorry, medial paw of the condor triangulates along the medial wall of the articular uh, fossa. Okay. All right, this is the head of the condor again, not the fossa. All right, so what, which one is here? That is here right there, okay? All right, so class three levers. So there's a question usually which asks, okay, what kind of uh, lever system or pulley system or uh, is the mandible? So the mandible is a, a, a class three lever system okay remember that a mandible if you remember your physics classes is a uh, pulleys levers okay the a lever is a uh, is either class one class two or class three and the mandible is class three because you have a fulcrum the fulcrum here is the 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 the, the, the tmj and then the force is the the the, the the muscle, this masseter and medial trigoid muscles applying the force there, and you have the work. The work is the food which goes in between. So all these they act as class three lever. Okay, all right. The fulcrum, you have force, and you have the work done. Crushing, okay, crushing food is work. You're always doing work when you are eating. All right. So that's the end quick review of this TMJ lecture. So you have, in total, you have uh, five TMJ lectures, all of them high held. If you do finish these five lectures, you, you have the basic knowledge of what a dentist should know, okay, to diagnose a T TMD and also treat appropriately or refer to a specialist, okay?